They may have thought of him as a local god up until the time of Moses. I don't really know. And I don't want to say that they didn't know, but Abraham believed God and he credited to him for righteousness. How Abraham perceived God at that time, I really don't know. And he but him out of, out of the land of Israel. That's right. So, but this, this God is showing himself to be the God that is in control of all things. Progressively revealing himself to humankind. Okay, he went further, you know, in the book of Isaiah, further in the book of Zechariah. Finally, he comes in the person of Jesus Christ. Paul then writes in the New Testament, by him all things are held together. Not just the things in Israel, not just the things that belong to Christians, but all things. And so, I don't know, you know, I don't want to insert what I know or what we know now into their heads back then. How much did they know that there is one God? They did know that there is God and that he has promised to bless them. But he is slowly revealing himself to humankind. There was a point where they didn't know that the Holy Spirit was God. There's a point where we didn't know that Jesus was God. These things are revealed slowly through time. So I don't know. And like I said, I don't want to say they were strong monotheists because I have no idea what they thought. But they did trust in this God and he promised them things and they believed him. Okay, and eventually he came and revealed himself in the person of Jesus, and there is only one God, you know. And I would assume, just Charlie, I would assume that they knew that, but I don't want to say that because I just wasn't back then. But he is now saying, I am the same God that was in Bethel. You see that? It's not just working in the land of Israel, it's working outside. Now I'm directing you to go back to this land, which was promised to your fathers. Go ahead. Then Rachel and Leah replied, do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has used up what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to us and our children. So do whatever God has told you. Okay, so they, they see a good thing when they, they got it. They know that they might as well go with their husband and their God's direct you, let's go, because... The father's inheritance is all used up. Everything that, that he had gotten for them, he's used up. And he's, you know, it's just the way it is. It's the same thing. <laughs> Think of Saudi Arabia, you know. I, this is just kind of an example. They are pumping that oil out of the ground and someday it's going to be gone, right? They're using up what they have and they've got nothing in reserve. Everything that they have will be gone and there won't be anything left and that's the same way as the whole world. We just tend to think short-sighted, and then everything is gone, and we blame everybody else for our problems. Well, yeah, well, everybody but ourselves and our own mismanagement of things. And so they're saying, hey, we're going with you. Then Jacob put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove all his livestock ahead of him, along with all the goods he had accumulated in Paddan Aram. To go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laban had gone to share sheep, Rachel stole her father's household goods, <laughs> or household gods. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laban, the arm, the arm man, by not telling him he was running away. So he fled with all he had, and crossing the river, he headed for the hill country of Gilead. Okay, he deceived Laban, so he still living out the name that he was given. He's a heel grabber, he's a deceiver or a supplanter. And in this case, he's deceiving them. And Laban is going to call him to account for that. But then Laban's going to get called into account for something as well. But anyway, this is another reason, reading passages like this, that make me wonder how well they knew the Lord. If she's going to steal her father's gods, then she must not have a clear conception of who God is and what he is about. I don't want to. I don't want to make this a doctrine. I just want you to think that through. Is that you know, if Jacob knew that there was one God and he said there's only one God and you're to worship Him, then she probably wouldn't have done that. But maybe he was a bad husband and didn't teach her that, or he simply didn't know this is the God I trust in and He has promised to deliver me. Okay, great. We're going with you. I don't know. I just want you to know that I am not really certain of what their idea of monotheism was, even though at the beginning Adam knew it. And all the way down through until Noah, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. There is a God. There is a creator. But it seems like some of that gets lost throughout the generations again. I, I, I just don't know. And so please forgive me for not knowing what Jacob thought, you know, as far as monotheism. But I would assume that he believed in it. But I can't say that dogmatically. Okay, go ahead. 
On the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had fled, taking his relatives with him. He pursued Jacob for seven days and caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. Then God <coughs> came to Laban, the Aramean, in a dream at night and said to him, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. <laughs> Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country of Gilead when Laban overtook him, and Laban and his relatives camped there too. Okay, so... He is spoken to by God saying, don't harm this person. Later, we're going to get down a couple more verses and he's going to be angry that somebody stole his household gods. So you've got to wonder, he's not piecing it together. God spoke to me in a dream. It wasn't one of these pieces of stone that was in my cabinet back at the house. Y you know... Well, they were just... They're called teraphim in Hebrew. They're, they're, it could... When, I don't know if you know the story of when Michal... Uh, David's wife hid David. Um, she told him to leave, and she put a, uh, a fake person in bed, okay, that was a teraphim. It's just an idol. It's, it's you know, or there are some things called the teraphim when, uh, what was his name, uh, Ehud, I think, when he went over and killed, uh, Ehud killed Barak. Anyway, the fat guy. No, Barak killed Ehud. Anyway, the big fat guy, and he stabbed him with a dagger, and the dagger went in, and the fat closed over it. Anyway, they went by some place called the teraphim, or the idols. So it's anything that is an idol, is a teraphim. So they could have been little guys that he kept up on a shelf and prayed to every day. People do it all the time. I had that store over in Golfgate and I sold Buddhas and people would come and they'd buy them and they'd, they'd pray to them. And finally when I met the Lord, I couldn't work there anymore. I just had to sell the store or actually close it and sell the, the, the property because I just, I couldn't stand to do that anymore. But people do it all the time. And what were his gods? Little stone things, little quartz things? I have no idea. But he prayed to these things. Yeah, was it one of these? or Yeah, well, it couldn't have been because he's saying don't do anything to this guy and his God wouldn't have protected him. So, And you'll see that in the conquest of Canaan. They'll get these gods and they'll destroy them. They'll, they'll take them. And, and so anyway, people have these little gods and they just make them and they pray to them and hoping that that little piece of stone would. Um, seeing as how we're talking about those, let's take, let me, don't, don't go there yet. I just want to see if I can find it. If I can't, then uh, I think it's Isaiah 40. Um, I think, and if I can, we'll just stop real quickly and we'll talk about that type of thing here. Let me see here. Um, uh, one of the most beautiful chapters to me in the whole Bible, if I can find it, 40, Behold My Servant, um, 41. Uh, that's not it, blind boy. Who's my blind servant? Uh, okay, it is. It's 40. Okay, I'm going to start at uh, 41. Is it 41? Inspired. Well, that's definitely it, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Um, <coughs> it's right in this area. Inspired. 41, see the greatness. Uh, um, yeah, it might be 45 too. Let's see, I'm going to get over there in just a second here. 41 says what I wanted, but there's another one. We'll go to 45, rain down. Um, and it, what it is, is he is making an idol, and it, it's exactly what we're talking about right here. And doggone it, you think, oh, here it is. Okay, it's in 44. I'll start with verse 12. It says, The blacksmith with tongs works one in the coals, fashions it with hammers, and works it with strength of his arms. Even so, he is hungry, and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. So he's talking about, actually, I could go back. We're going to start again at 9. Those who make an image... All of them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witnesses. They never see nor know that they may be ashamed. Who would form a god or mold an image that profits him nothing? Surely all his companions would be ashamed, and the workmen, they are mere men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up, yet they shall fear. They shall be ashamed together. The blacksmith with the tongs works one in the coals, fashions it with hammer. So he is making this god. And it says... Uh, and works it with the strength of his arms. His own arms is making this thing. Even so, he is hungry and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. So he's making his God and he is weary making his God. Then it goes on. This is just the most beautiful writing right here. The craftsman stretches out his rule. He marks one out with chalk. He fashions it with a plane. He marks it out with a compass and makes it like the figure of a man. According to the beauty of a man that it may remain in the house. 
He cuts down cedars for himself and takes the cypress and the oak. He secures it for himself among the trees of the forest. So he picks out this beautiful tree that God created. He plants a pine and the rain nourishes it. Then it shall be for a man to burn. It's just a tree. We use it for fuel. For he will take some of it and warm himself. He's chiseling away this log. And he takes a little bit of it while he's working and he throws it in the fire to warm himself. Yes, he kindles it and bakes bread. Indeed, he makes a god and worships it out of the same thing that he's using for fire, he's making a god. He makes it as a carved image and falls down to it. After making this thing, he bows down to it. He burns half of it in the fire. With this half, he eats meat. He roasts a roast and is satisfied. He even warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. The fire from this piece of wood that he's making into a god. And the rest of it he makes into a god, his carved image. He falls down before it and worships it, prays to it and says, deliver me, for you are my God. It's like people that do feng shui and they get this little plastic thing that came out of a mold in Wang Chung, China and they pray to it or they put it in the corner of their house and they say, this is going to be my happy good luck idol and, the, and they do it all over America. People doing feng shui and all these crazy, it's exactly the same thing. They do not know nor understand, for he has shut their eyes so that they cannot see, and their hearts so that they cannot understand, and no one considers in his heart, nor is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned half of it in the fire, yes, I have also baked bread on its coals, I have roasted meat and eaten it, and shall I make out of the rest of it an abomination? Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? And that's what God is saying. From these idols back in, in Genesis all the way through to the end, idolatry, it, what is the last, last thing it says in the book of, let's see here, 1 John, it says, he goes through this long discourse in 1 John about the Holy Spirit, about the Son of God, about how He was manifest, about love, about all of these things, the very last thing He says in the book of 1 John, little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. It is, it is the great sin of the human heart to want to worship anything except God. We want to worship women. We want to worship this. We want to worship that. Cars and every single thing else. And John, the beloved of the Lord, out of all of this beautiful discourse that he does in the book of 1 John, he finally says, just kind of off to the side, keep yourself from idols. I've been talking about the one that you need to keep your eyes on. No idols. Oh, so that, that should answer your question. Whatever they were, they were just things in a house and Rachel stole them for whatever reason. Maybe she thought she's going to get blessed by him or whatever. But we'll find out what happens to him in just a few uh, verses. Maybe not today, but anyway, where were we? Uh, I think it was a stolen house. Okay, 20 is where we were. Oh, I'm sorry. No, they went down to Gilead, so 22. 20, 22. 26. Oh, 26. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 26 then. Then Laban said to Jacob, what have you done? You've deceived me and you've carried off my daughters like captives in a war. Deceive me again. Okay, so he's, he's feeling deceived by the deceiver and he's using his name against him. Okay, and you've taken away my daughters, which he sold, right? You know, so there's, there's good and bad on both sides of this. That's right. Okay, verse 27. Why did you run off secretly and deceive me? Why did you tell me so I could send you away with joy and singing to the music of tambourines and harps? Do you think that would have happened? No. Not in a million years. But he's got to somehow make face because he was rebuked by the God of Israel the night before. So he's got to say, well, you know, I would have given me this big happy party. I guarantee you that's what the, the enemies of Israel would do to this day. For another oh, seven yeah. years of service. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you a party and you can work for me just seven more years. Yeah. You're right. That's right. All right, go ahead. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. You have done a foolish thing. But, go ahead. I have the power to harm you, but last night the God of your father said to me, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And Jacob is going to let him know about that in just a minute. Go ahead. Now you have mm -hmm. run off because you longed to return to your father's house. But why did you steal my God? Uh-oh. So, you know what, Jacob? Jacob didn't, he doesn't know anything about this. All right, so this is, this could be trouble. Go ahead. 
Jacob answered Laban, I was afraid because I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. 